Uh oh. No. What's going on, YouTubers? So, I bought a 2007 F-150. No, I did not just buy one. This was the truck that I purchased before this one. It was a real shit show. I settled, I really wanted, you know, at the time, for how much I was making versus how much I wanted to spend, I'm like, you know, the 2007, like the 2000, I think, what is it, four to uh, 2008 body style. This was, you know, over six years ago. I was like, this is gonna be the perfect truck. So I'd search and search, and I'm the kind of guy that like, I'm gonna search for a truck around town, but I'm gonna search, you know, out of state because sometimes, you know, obviously you can find deals out of state. So I found a place about five hours away, and it was a Ford dealership. Found the truck, ran the Carfax on it, one owner. You know, your first thought when you see that, you're like, perfect, one owner? Generally, the person who's a one owner takes very good care of it, you know, generally. This person did not. So I travel five hours, we get there. There's a scratch. Scratch! I mean, not like a small scratch, like a solid, decent scratch on it. And I'm talking like over four inches long and the guy acted like, well, you know, I seen the photos and I'm like, well, I can't see that scratch in the photo. So there was red flag one. So he took some money off. Then they tried to throw in some, uh, they were like, oh, we can throw in some floor mats for you, which they threw in not even weather techs. It was just like them Ford rubber ones. They're smaller, whatever. We were there till close. So that meant when I drove it home, I couldn't call nobody at that dealership because they were close. I went probably an hour until I realized, hey, we get to a gas station, gas up, turn the truck on, and it's making kind of like a knock noise. And I'm like, okay weird and then it went away so I just end up driving it all the way back to uh, Iowa I noticed it was always went in I drove it for a bit turned it off maybe ran into the gas station something like that started it happens again so I'm like the f you know it came with a 6,000 mile powertrain warranty whatever that used cars you know used car dealerships basically give now with it so I'm like dude something's wrong with the truck you know, I can't take it back five hours, you know, but supposedly the 6,000 mile um, little warranty that it includes works at all Ford dealerships, supposedly, or a majority of them. So I took it to my local Ford dealership, which I hated because I didn't buy the truck there. They're searching and they cannot replicate the issue. And they're trying, I think I got two more calls. I said, dude, I go literally, it's like I drive it up the road for a little bit. I stop at the gas station. I run inside, grab a drink, come out, Start it up and it starts making the knock noise. And he's like, okay, we'll give you a call back. Sure enough, he's like, we definitely have heard the knock noise now. Come to find out, they ripped into it. One of the cam phasers needed replaced. They said there's a lot of scarring on the, um, on the cam caps. And then they get dug into it more and one of the crank journals was just ruined. So he's like, basically you need a new motor. And I'm like, oh shit. So I'm like, okay, well, I have the warranty. The warranty should cover it. It's a hundred dollar deductible, but you gotta get the warranty to approve it. We're gonna make a quick pit stop to the post office. I'm gonna show you guys a couple of Picassos I painted this morning. Check this, guys. This is what happens when you're a very competitive person and you need side cash. I painted these today. I'm getting ready to ship them out. Wrigley, do these smell like straight up paint? Yes, they do. So what do we got here? These are our RC body, remote control car bodies, custom painted by yours truly. Now, the way you paint these is, you don't paint it on the outside, you paint it on the inside. So what I do is, I draw, I hand draw this whole design with a Sharpie, hand draw it all, and I use this stuff called liquid mask on the inside, and I take an X-Acto knife and I cut the whole design out, and then I go through and custom paint it. There's my little logo. 
so yeah, uh, we're just getting ready to ship these out to a customer, and uh, he said he liked them. He said they're dope. But I needed side cash at the time. I don't do as many bodies as I used to because it's kind of a grind. I even actually painted for if you guys, if any of you guys follow um, motocross or supercross, I actually painted a couple for Christian Craig, who's now a factory Husqvarna rider. So super cool, super cool. So now I'm at the point where I'm like, okay, I just got a truck. I haven't even had it a week now and I need a new motor. They contacted the warranty. They did not want to cover it because they said that the um, dealership that I bought it from should have already had fixed this issue. So I'm like, okay, I will call the dealership. I'll call them. I mean, this went on back and forth between us. Like they didn't, they didn't want to deal with it and they didn't want to deal with me. And I was actually being pretty cordial with them. I just wanted to, you know, get to the bottom of it so we could get, you know, get get this fixed. Well, the next thing was the warranty would not approve it. So finally, you know, and I told the one manager, he was the one uh, general manager, he was a douchebag to me. I mean, like for me just buying a truck, completely nice. I mean, they treated me like shit. I will never go to that dealership. I would never recommend them. They are shady dudes. Um, just the fact that they were rude to me and here I am buying a truck That needs a new motor. I get a call from you know the the store manager or whoever he was I don't even remember but he was the upper 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 Well, then he says he's not They're gonna replace the truck. They're like we'll replace the motor But you bought a used truck and you'll get a used motor and he was like he said it to me like I'm the one who blew this motor up, right? He's like you bought a used truck. You'll get a used motor and I'm not paying another technician to put it in. We'll have our technicians do it. I said, if I have to bring that truck five hours, actually I think it was five and a half hours back to you, I want my full money back. I said, here's the deal. Had you known the motor was bad, you would have either A, sold it in an auction, B, fixed it correctly. So I gave you guys more than enough money to front a new remanufactured motor. He was like, you could tell he sat there for a second like shit, he's got a point. Yeah, because the truck wasn't worth shit. Then I called the maintenance department. I was like, you know what? I'm tired of dealing with them guys. I'll just call the maintenance department and see if they uh, they did anything. And the guy was a super nice guy, right? Um, and he was like, oh yeah, I remember that truck. He's like, we probably put about a few thousand dollars in it. We did uh, one of the cam phasers, a left side exhaust manifold. That truck was good to go. Told him the problems, you know? And he was just like, oh man. That guy was like the nicest guy there because he wasn't there to try to finagle me or anything. He was just there to, you know, run that shop. And then once the upper management, you know, knew that I wanted to just return the truck for a full refund, we end up getting the motor replaced. I paid a hundred dollar deductible, but it took over two weeks. So I went three weeks without my new truck. Paid that hundred dollar deductible. I got a brand new remanufactured motor in it. They also actually did the right side manifold. So now, I get my truck, motor's replaced, all is well. We get the truck back on a Friday. Driving the truck, you know, I have it for a week. Literally the next Friday, leave work, truck dies. I'm like, great, just had a new motor put in. I'm sure it's something that's, you know, that goes along with that. It was not. Have the truck towed to the dealership that did the motor. What are you doing? It's the fuel pump module. They told me the price, I can't even remember what the price was, but I was just, it was so high, I was like, absolutely not. Like, that's not, that's not acceptable. I'm not going to pay you guys that much. I said, hey, what do you got to do to fuel, replace that fuel pump module? And he's like, well, you got to drop the spare tire. And, you know, he rambled on. I said, don't fix it. First off, there's not even a spare tire on the truck right now. My buddy's got a uh, account with another, with another Ford dealership. And he says, hey, let's just go get that part with my account. I go get the part, bring a couple tools. I get under the truck in the parking lot unbolt i think it was like maybe three bolts unbolt it bolt the new one in plug it in truck starts i just drove the truck away saved like 300 dollars. about two weeks later i look out in the parking lot at work antifreeze underneath the truck like a decent amount i'm like well i have the warranty take the truck back in and you know and i'm like you know it hasn't been that long you guys replaced the motor you guys probably hit the radiator and you know they're like well what it was fine for you know how many two weeks so paid another hundred dollar deductible had a new radiator 
got the truck back. I'm like, what else is going to go wrong? There's only so many things you can fix on a vehicle. So I'm like, you know what? It's process of elimination at this point. It's my truck. I'm not selling it. I got to just, we got to figure it out. We got to go pick up some lunch. It's that time. We're going to go pick up some fire chicken. Uh, sure. No. Wrigley, we have secure the sweet fire chicken. You got a Panda Express, which you probably do. They're everywhere. Do not sleep on the sweet fire chicken, Wrigley. We gotta put up like a uh, blockade. So after all of those issues, the truck was squared away. We had the new motor, new exhaust manifolds, the new fuel pump module, the new radiator. The truck was solid. I didn't really have any issues with it until the sunroof broke. I didn't even opt to fix it. I was going to, but the amount that people were wanting to replace the sunroof was insane, and I don't even use it that much anyway, so I just never actually fixed it. And the truck was solid. I think I had it for like four years. Never another mechanical issue outside of that. So just because you buy a one owner vehicle obviously means jack shit. That person didn't take care of it, but the problem with the 5.4 Tritons are, if you don't routinely change the oil at least every 5,000, you know, it's an oil pressure driven motor and you're just asking for issues. And that's the main reason why a lot of people have issues with the Tritons. You got to stay on top of the oil changes and you got to use a Ford Motocraft oil filter if you want it to last. We're going to take Wrigley over to where are we going, Wrigley? Jade's house. We're going to take Wrigley over to the parents' house. His best friend Jade is over there. As always, guys, make sure to drop this video a thumbs up if you liked it and hit that subscribe button because me and Wrigley are going to be back with more videos. Peace.